Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast, your one-stop shop for daily Miami Heat content. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to the YouTube channel and listening to the podcast. I'm on my path to 2,000 subscribers, so if you guys do enjoy the content, don't forget to hit subscribe. So for today's episode, I want to talk about two players on the Miami Heat that can make a big impact, and they are two of our youngest players on the team. So um, I want to talk about Kalel Ware and Nikola Jovic and talk about who I think will have a bigger impact for the Miami Heat in the 2024-2025 season. But before I do get into the episode, just want to take a quick second to talk again about Magic Mind. So Magic Mind sent me this package a few weeks ago, and I've been taking this um, mental performance shot for I think 13 days now, and I did an update after seven days of taking the the product, and I talked about how there's a ton of benefits that I've enjoyed um, from the shot. Been you know super busy with again school interviews, the podcast life, and I really enjoyed the flow state that I've been in. Like I I've been more energetic. Um, even though I've been very active and busy and on the go. And I play basketball today. Usually after I play basketball during the day, I come back home, my body's tired and I I feel tired as well. Um, And it's usually draining, but you know, I take my magic mind before I play and I'm noticing a difference when I come back home after I take a shower, after I rehydrate, I'm not as tired as I used to be. So really enjoying magic mind. If you guys want to try it, I will leave my, code uh beat miami 20 in the description so you guys can get either 20 percent off or 48 percent off a subscription so don't forget to check out magic mind so back to the episode so i want to talk again about who's going to have a bigger impact um the miami heat have two young big players that i'm excited about so we all know nikola jovic has been with the miami heat for two seasons he's going into his third year and we know kalel ware is the rookie we drafted this um, off season with the 15th pick, he helped the Miami Heat win a summer league championship in Las Vegas, and he looked really good while playing. So, um, let's talk about the two players. So, um, we know what Kalel Ware is going to bring to the table. He's going to bring um, incredible size and shot blocking. Um, he's a really good defender. He's standing at seven feet tall, so he is someone that can help protect the rim, which would be good for Bam and Abayo because then he could become more of a roamer and a help defender. We know the Miami Heat like to rotate a lot. So Bam Adebayo, you know, can't really leave the paint a lot. When he's on the perimeter, we usually suffer because players like Nikola Jovic or Thomas Bryant or Kevin Love aren't the most off defensive minded or gifted players on that end. So Kalel can come in and, you know, his defensive presence in the paint is going to be great. And he also has untapped offensive potential. Um, he's already being compared to some of the league's top rim protectors, which is great. Um, on the other hand, we have, uh, Nikola Jovic, who's entering his third season with the Miami heat. We know that Nico is a versatile forward who can stretch the floor with his shooting shot, almost 40% from three last season. He can make plays off the dribble. He's improving in that area. He's a good transition player, coast to coast player. Um, and he's grown immensely since his rookie season where he only played 15 games, his rookie year played 46 last year. And, you know, started a ton of those games. Um, So he's showing some flashes of brilliance. um, And we saw that with his international play, not so much with the Olympics this year, but with FIBA a few seasons ago. Um, So in terms of offense, who's going to have a bigger impact? Uh, Kalel Ware is is still raw in that department, um, theoretically, but his potential is really exciting. Um, If he can develop a consistent post game, um, Initially, because I know he's going to be in that dunker spot. He's athletic. Saw him get a ton of alley-oops um, from Isaiah Stevens and other players um, in the G League or the, the Summer League in Vegas. Um, if he can also you know, incorporate that post-up game initially, then that's going to be huge because then eventually he could stretch the floor, increase his range to the mid-range. We saw that he hit some good turnaround jumpers and some mid-range jumpers in Summer League. And then also he was able to hit the three. Not at a high clip, but in college, you know, on a few attempts, he shot like 40% or whatever that number was. And so we need to see if he can actually do that at 
the NBA level against NBA teams. So if he can do that, he's going to be super dynamic. And we know his ability to finish at the rim is something that's um, there already. And again, if he could stretch the floor with Bam at a bio on the floor and Bam stretching the floor as well, that's going to give Bam or Jimmy, Tyler, Terry, plenty of room to operate um, downhill. So Nico, um, on the other hand, again, is already more polished. He's already played 60 something NBA games. So he does have an advantage there. Um, his shooting from beyond the arc has improved. Um, and from his first season when he only played 15 games before he had that back injury and a ton of DM please DMPs in general, because Spoda doesn't love playing rookies, but he went up from 22% to 39% um, in terms of his three point percentage. So I think Nico um, has that ability to space the floor, especially if he's going to start next to Bam and Jimmy Tyler and Terry, you know, he's going to have to play within the confines of his role, which is going to be like a spot up shooter. Of course, he's a decent rebounder averaged um, four rebounds per game last season, only played, 19 minutes per game, but we saw what he was able to do in transition coast to coast. He was able to be dynamic um, in that area um, off the dribble. So I think movement is a huge factor in his game. And if Jovic can continue, can continue to improve in that area and his decision-making, he could become a key offensive weapon for the Miami Heat next season. Um, going back to defense, as I mentioned, so let's talk more about the defense because that's where Kalel where shines. He's got um, elite shot blocking instincts and ability we saw he averaged two blocks per game in college and in the summer league he averaged like 1.8 blocks per game which is great um so he does have the ability to block shots also alter shots at the rim which could make him a cornerstone in this miami heats defense next to bam at a bio and with jimmy butler that's a pretty good trio right there um which could definitely cover up um the inefficiencies of tyler and um, terry rogier on the defensive end so i think that's going to be great with Kalel Ware coming in initially, um, he has the potential to be one of the top defenders in the league, hypothetically. Um, if he stays disciplined, if he develops his footwork, if he becomes passionate and hungry on that end, buys into the Heat's defensive schemes and systems, then he could be one of the best defenders in the future for the NBA. Jovic, on the other hand, not the best defender. Um, he's not a shot blocker, uh, but he does use his length. He's six foot eleven. Um he is getting better at defense, honestly. His mobility and his ability to slide his feet have definitely improved last season. You saw at the beginning he wasn't sliding his feet well, using his hands a lot, getting called for those ticky-tack fouls, kind of like Duncan Robinson in the past. Um, but he's showing that you know he's versatile enough where you know you can keep him on the floor um, because he's not a complete defensive liability um, at this point. So that's somewhere he needs to work on. Um, but the disadvantage of having Jovic in compared to where is that you're not going to have that traditional rim protector. So in terms of fit with the Miami Heat system, they both fit in with the Miami Heat system. Um, we've seen that with Jovic. Now we need to see that with Kalel Ware in the regular season. Um, so Ware's role might be more specialized early on coming in in that dunker spot, you know, being that lob threat, kind of like Derek Lively was for Dallas. Um, I see him in that role where he's just going to be more of a defensive player, not going to write any place for him, honestly, offensively, but hopefully he can get in the pick and roll action um, with Terry and Tyler and become a lob threat. And I think that's going to be his value on offense. Um, so he's got a good mentor with Bam. Um, and yeah, I think he can make a good impact. We'll see. Uh, Jovic, on the other hand, I think with his fit, he can fit in more as that stretch for, um, starting next to Bam out of bio. So going back with that starting five that we had last season, um, you know, he's going to be that spot up four that can hit the three that can play off the dribble at times as well. So he is versatile where he can play at the four. He doesn't want to play at the five, but he could play at the five, but he could also play as our point forward as well. So I would like to see him coming off the bench actually versus starting and seeing him run the second unit as our backup point guard, because he does better, with the ball in his hands. Like as a starter, he's going to be a specialist where he's just going to stand there and shoot. But if he's coming off the bench, he's going to have more of a responsibility um, where we can run the offense, you know, through him, he's going to get up more shot attempts um, and he's going to have the ball in his hands. So he's obviously going to be able to play, make more for his teammates. So anyway, in terms of who I think was, who's going to have a bigger impact next season, I think, I think it's going to be Jovic just because he has the experience. He's only 21, Kalel's 20, so he's not much older, but he's going to go into his third year, and he's actually played against NBA talent, and he has that NBA experience, something that Kalel doesn't have as a rookie. So he has that 
advantage early on. So I'm going to give the nod to Jovic because he's had that experience. But I think Kalel Ware is the better prospect of the two. And I think Kalel Ware is going to be a cornerstone of this Miami Heat team. Defensively, specifically first, but then hopefully his offensive game improves over time um, and becomes a game changer. So I'm going to say initially it's going to be Jovic who's going to have more of an impact because he's going to get more of those minutes. He has trust with Spo, which is huge. Kalel has to earn that trust in training camp in the preseason and in the regular season. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be Jovic at first and then Kalel eventually um, is going to have more impact, hopefully some point during next season. So anyway, that's all I have for today's video. Again, don't forget to um, look at Magic Mind. Again, if you guys are interested in trying it out, take a look at the link in my description. You guys can get a discount and see if you like it yourself. So thanks again. Hope you guys have a good one.